Almost three years ago, we warned you that Islamic extremism was sprouting up in Mexico and across the southern border of Mexico. We told you about Hezbollah and their training manuals that were found along the border. One, in memory of our martyrs, was found in a route uh, that was known for smuggling illegal immigrants and drugs into Mexico. The book was published in Iran, and it consists of short biographies of Islamic suicide bombers and militants who died carrying out attacks. Well, now we find out this weekend that Iran is now openly courting young Mexicans to come to Iran and be part of an immersion course described as anti-Americanism and Islam. We are proud to have a, uh, a new uh, senior partner in Washington. She's our senior Washington correspondent, Sarah Carter. Um, she is the, um, the woman who exposed the tunnels. She was the first woman to really bring us the news of Campion and uh, Ramos, Ramos and Campion, the two border agents. And um, we're going to get to some other things that she has on the Iranian connection, but I wanted to start here with a new keyword loophole that is happening on the border. Sarah, welcome to the program. It's nice to be with you, Glenn. Thank you so much for having me. Um, so, okay, so tell me about the, um, the, the code word. The code words are what? Credible fear. Credible fear. And Credible what does that fear. mean? That means if you have any type of fear, which anybody can, I guess, guesstimate on their own, whether it's credible or not, you can be allowed to stay in the country. And, and some people aren't even getting report to court dates. They're just being let go. This is incredible. So basically, you cross the border. You say, I have credible fear. They say, well, credible fear of what? Some people have said things, I'm afraid of my neighbor. Uh, one ICE agent told me my neighbor, uh, that a lady had told him, my neighbor's a witch, and I'm afraid she's going to cast a spell on me. Adjudicator into the country. She has credible fear. These are incredible claims. And when I called ICE and I asked them last year, I've asked them twice, could you please give me the stats, the documentation to show me what you are and how you are adjudicating people into this country? They refused to give it to me. They said, well, they don't keep those statistics. Those are statistics Bullcrap. that they just don't keep. I, of course, of course, it's not the truth. They have those stats because they have them on paper somewhere in their offices filed. And I've been told by Border Patrol agents, this is from Texas to Arizona. Arizona to California, that people have been told to just adjudicate these people into the country. It doesn't matter what they claim. Okay, and this is just incredible. All right, so let's, let's go back a step here. Um, uh, credible fear, right? That's, those are the code mm -hmm. words? Credible fear. Those are the code words. Okay. Credible fear. So that means that somebody is teaching them credible fear. Who do we ha do we have any idea? Is this the government of Mexico? Is this our government? Is this a bunch of leftists? Who is going down to Mexico and saying, listen, here's what you do? <laughs> it's a combination of everyone. It's a combination of people within our government, uh, supervisors who are telling their adjudicators, hey, look, we just have to let them in. I don't want any complaints. I don't want anybody trying to file paperwork against these guys. I don't want you to try to send these folks home. Just let them in. It's the people who have gotten in who are calling home and say, hey, guys, come on down. Just say credible fear. Even if you're Chinese, say credible fear. Well, why? Oh, claim you're a Christian and say you can't go back to China for fear that you won't be able to practice your religion. Say credible fear. Mexican government's doing the same thing. Can we do the this? prosecutors. Can we do this with the uh, Christian uh, family from Germany? I don't know if you remember that story. But yeah, of course. Yeah, I mean, can we do it with them and just have them claim credible fear? I, well, I'm guessing well, no. Yeah, I'm guessing no. Isn't that interesting yeah. how it doesn't work for them, but it works for right. everybody else? Okay. And this is part of the major problem that we're seeing along the border. This is just theater, Glenn. It's theater. They are hiding the truth from the American people, and people that work along the border are afraid to speak up because they're afraid of losing their jobs, and people that live there are just frustrated. We are, I mean, I'm telling you, we're becoming Mexico. We're becoming a country where you can't trust the federales. You can't trust, right. you know, you can't trust the politicians. You can't trust anybody because they're all on the take. Tell me about the, um, uh, the federal um, agency. I don't know if it's ICE or not, but I read a story this morning that says that they're now booking these hotel rooms because they, they have too many people coming over. 
<laughs> they don't have enough space to hold them. Yet the weird thing is we've built facilities all across the United States to hold people, but we just don't have enough space to hold them. So we have to put them into hotels. And, you know, the ICE agents as well as the Border Patrol agents have told me, look, we have so many people coming in. And there have been times where we've had people. OK, for example, let me give you an example. Somebody comes in from Somalia. They catch them on the border. We know that Al-Shabaab is in Somalia, terrorist organization connected with Al-Qaeda. So we have these guys cross the border. Let's say they run their prints. They're not found anywhere on an Interpol, but we don't know if they're terrorists or not, but we can't send them back to Somalia, right? Because there's no actual government there to, re to take them. So what we do is we give them a little notice to appear in court, or we don't even do that. We put them on a bus and we drop them off at the local bus station in Phoenix. C'est la vie, that's it. They're gone, they're mixed into our system. We don't know who they are. Jeez, we don't know we where they so have gone. Trouble. We're not even tracking them. Okay, so, I, I, I wanna go into the Gang of Eight legislation and what's happening in Washington, but I, I think I wanna move, I wanna push that back because I, I, I have to go to the stuff that is going on in, uh, with Iran. Tell me quickly what is happening with Iran, um, uh, bringing people over, what are they doing? Well, this is a fascinating report. I mean, we have been talking about this forever. I know you have. I know I've been reporting on the influence of Iran in South America and Mexico for years now, maybe even a decade. I've been talking about this, and I know you've been doing the same. Well, the Washington Post, Joby Warwick, wrote a story about Iranian influence inside Mexico. And there is a man, and let me pronounce his name, Mohsen Rabani. He is an Islamic cleric uh, in Iran who has been working. He's the head of a group, a department in Iran that actually has spends all their time building Building cultural centers in South America and in Mexico and Central America, recruiting from Central America and Mexico young Latinos that he can take back to Iran and train and indoctrinate, indoctrinate in their religious city of Calm. Now, this is one of the most uh, sacred cities for the Shiites. So think about this, young Latino men and women traveling to Iran, being indoctrinated by members of the Iranian Revolutionary Guard, which basically back terrorist organizations like Hezbollah, mm -hmm. like Hamas, these groups which are now established in South America. I mean, Hezbollah, we know for a fact, is established in South America and used as a proxy by the Iranian government. So now they're taking young men there and women and then sending them back to Mexico. And these young folks are becoming recruiters and and voices for the Iranian government right in our backyard, Glenn. And, I mean, and, this and is then a then serious we, threat. And then we keep our borders open, and I'll tell you, at some yeah. point if something happens, and it will never, it will never. If something happens and somebody came across our border, there are a lot of people in Washington, D.C. that should be tried for treason. But we'll Absolutely. save that for another show. Because the facts are out there. Thank the you, Sarah. The facts are out there. Appreciate it. Uh, that's Sarah Thank Carter. She is um, our senior uh, Washington correspondent. She's also working on us with uh, for a documentary, a special episode of For the Record on the Border. It will be airing September 12th, and uh, I am told that your jaw will drop when you see what we have exposed on the border. She is one of the most fearless people on the border. And that is happening on this network and only this network on September 12th. And by the way, thanks to you and your friends being a um, subscriber, we can afford to do that kind of journalism.